Bob. Thank you, Sam. Okay. So, hello and welcome to the third webinar in the Pediatric Webinar Series, Living with a Cardiac Condition. My name is Hinos and I'll be facilitating the webinar today um, with Sam. We'll also be helping to answer any questions you may have at the end of the webinar. So we intend the webinar to be 30 minutes with 10 minutes at the end for questions. So we understand that receiving and living with a diagnosis of a heart condition within the family will be a different experience for each child and family. So it's normal to experience lots of different thoughts and feelings, both positive and negative. So this presentation contains some ideas from the psychology team in supporting you to support the siblings of children who have a diagnosis of a heart condition. So as I said, this is the third webinar in the series. The first focused on supporting your child coming into hospital, and the second focused on supporting parents to manage the impact of having a child with a heart condition. Um, so we'd just like to um, apologise if um, you experience any technical difficulties accessing the live webinar events um, for the previous two webinars, um, but just to assure you that the recordings of all the webinars will be available online. So it's important to say that we don't intend for the contents of the webinars to be distressing. However, we do appreciate that it might potentially trigger some responses or emotions related to your family and your experiences. So please do look after yourselves. Take a break or a pause from the webinar if you need to. You can stop the webinar and come back, come back to it later on. As a recording will be available of all the webinars online. If you do find the webinar difficult, we will talk about ways that you can access support or additional support at the end of the webinar. As I said, there will be a 10 minute question and answer section at the end. And also we would really appreciate your feedback at the end of the webinar. So a link will be sent to you with an online survey and we'd really appreciate you taking the time to complete the survey if you can. As I said, there'll be a 10 minute question and answer section at the end. We'll try to cover as many of the questions as we can during the question and answer section, but we might not have time to answer every question. So you can ask questions using the chat function on your screen. So it's important that we keep people's inform information confidential. So we're not able to give specific or individually tailored advice during the Q&A section. Um, so if any information is shared with us during the webinar that makes us concerned about your safety or the safety of anyone else, we'll contact you after the webinar is finished to think about any additional support you might need at this time. Uh, as I said, we will also have a list of services at the end that you, where you can access additional support if you need to. We hope you find the talk helpful. So before we start and consider the needs of siblings, I think it's important to acknowledge and consider that supporting a child who has a cardiac condition can be stressful. And you, like lots of families and parents, might have lots of different thoughts and complex feelings. So this could include anxiety, anger, sadness, loneliness, happiness, and guilt. So whilst trying to manage all these complex feelings that you might be experiencing, you're probably having to manage several competing demands on your time and resources. So these might include supporting your child to manage their condition, answering their questions and worries, <clears throat> excuse me, arranging and attending hospital to appointments, managing different treatments and medications, all of this currently um, in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. So this might seem like a never ending list whilst also having to juggle the demands of, of work and running a family home. So it's important to acknowledge that the circumstances of every family is different. So you and your family might also be managing additional stresses and worries that may make managing all these demands feel even more difficult. So this could include managing your own health problems or financial worries. So it's therefore really important to always remain mindful of how much you're doing and managing and achieving whilst being kind to yourself. 
So it's important to know that the second webinar in this series was focused on um, ways that parents can um, manage some of the stresses associated with um, supporting a child with a cardiac condition. And if you'd like more information about this, um, please do access the recording of the um, second webinar, which will be available online. Um, so today, we're going to focus on one of the many important roles that you may have, which is caring for and supporting your other children. So we'll be considering the needs of siblings and going through some ideas to help you to support your other children in what are often difficult circumstances. So you are definitely not alone if you sometimes feel guilty for having to prioritise your time and energy into um, caring for an unwell sibling. Okay. So you, like many parents of children who have cardiac conditions, may have lots of thoughts and worries about your other children. So here's a list of common things that parents describe worrying about when it comes to siblings. So it's important to say that every child and family is different. So some or all of these concerns might not apply to you and your family. So some of the concerns include being apart from their other children, sometimes for prolonged periods of time when they need to support their other child in hospital. So unfortunately, we know that parents might be required at times to support um, their child with a cardiac condition um, in hospital. And these admissions can sometimes be planned or unexpected. And the length of time can also vary. And this can lead to, to periods of separation from their other children, with parents then not being able to spend as much time as they would like with their other children. Sometimes parents describe also not having time to take their other children to activities to after school or sporting events due to the um, competing demands and lots of the demands on their time. Something that's often come up during the COVID-19 pandemic is that families who were required to shield um, to protect the more vulnerable siblings, the sibling with a cardiac condition, they describe worrying that the other siblings might be missing out or becoming more isolated um, due to having to shield to protect their sibling. Sometimes we hear parents say that they have some concerns that older siblings might want to take extra, take on extra responsibilities or caring roles for their other siblings. Understandably, parents sometimes describe some concern or worry that siblings might not understand their sibling's health condition or the competing demands on the family. So they might not really understand what their sibling is experiencing and therefore might not really understand why they have periods of separation, for example, from mum or dad. Um, and understandably, some parents have some worry about the children's emotional well-being and their ability to cope with the uncertainty of living with a sibling who has a cardiac condition. So when thinking about the common concerns that parents often have, it's also really important to remember some of the strengths that might develop for those siblings as a result of having a sibling with a chronic illness. So they may then develop greater compassion and empathy. And due to part, being part of the family system, supporting a child with a cardiac condition, they may develop increased knowledge and understanding of medical procedures. From witnessing and supporting their sibling, they may develop, may, they may become very proud of their sibling and develop greater maturity, responsibility and patience. And some children do enjoy completing some caregiving tasks and being part of that process with the family. They may develop increased feelings of closeness and advocacy for their sibling. It's also important to consider that whilst I've described that some um, siblings may need to spend time with extended family members um, of a support network due to the parents um, needing to be a way to support the child with a cardiac condition. This is also a great opportunity for them to develop strong relationship with other family members who take care of them during this time, an opportunity they might not otherwise have had. So all children respond differently to their brother or sister being unwell. So despite parents often working really, really hard to protect their children, here are some of the challenges that some siblings describe experiencing. So they may describe a pressure to be well, normal or perfect. So siblings may um, pick up on the fact that mum and dad 
have been worried or distressed um, due to worrying about their brother or sister's cardiac condition. So they may then want, may result with them then trying to hide or shield or protect their parents from any further worry or distress. So they might then hide how they're feeling. They may feel left out or jealous. Um, this might arise due to perhaps them not fully understanding why mum and dad um, are away supporting the child with a cardiac condition and then wanting to spend time with them, more time within themselves. Over time, this might result with feelings of anger. So for example, this could happen when family routines um, are disrupted or if they interpret that the unwell sibling is allowed to behave in ways uh, or do things that they're not allowed to. So for example, missing schools or not completing certain chores. Sometimes children might feel confused or not understand what's happening to their sibling. And we know that when children don't fully understand what's happening, sometimes they come to their own scary conclusions, which aren't correct. So, for example, they might worry um, or feel guilty that they may have some, somehow caused the cardiac condition or may develop the condition themselves. They may feel sad scared or worried about their sibling having medical procedures or being in hospital and understandably they might miss parents or siblings when they're separated due to hospital admissions. So some of these difficulties over time can sometimes result in more challenging behaviours or with children displaying difficulties with anxiety or low mood. Okay so depending on their age and level of development there might be a different signs that children are worried. So you may have noticed that for your child, they may have different signs. So if a child isn't necessarily able or, um, or perhaps is reluctant to share with you that they're worried, here are some of the signs that might indicate this. So for preschool age children under the age of five, worry might look like physical symptoms such as restlessness or needing more physical contact than usual. For primary school age children between the age of five and 10, you might see difficulty sleeping, regression in toileting, um, complaining of, phys of physical pain without a clear physical cause. In secondary school, so for children between the ages of 11 and 16, you might notice changes to sleeping or eating habits, nervousness or irritability, finding it harder than usual to concentrate or remember things, and again, unexplained physical symptoms. So to support siblings to feel secure and confident, the following tips and strategies are likely to be helpful. So the first one is sharing information. It's helpful to share information with siblings about their brother or sister's illness and how this might affect the family. So as I said, when they don't understand, they sometimes come to their own scary and incorrect conclusions. So it's helpful to always remember and be mindful of their of the child's age and their level of development when sharing information. So for example, using simple language that they'll understand and giving information in small manageable chunks so not to overwhelm them. So sometimes it's helpful to do this using storybooks that provide child-friendly explanations. As part of this process, you could also practice what they feel comfortable saying if their friends ask about their brother or sister's cardiac condition. So it may be, they're worried about how they would manage questions, how they would respond. So giving them an opportunity to practice this might help to alleviate some of that anxiety or worry. Secondly, is allowing time for them to ask questions and express their feelings. So it's important for children to have the opportunity to ask questions and express how they're feeling. By doing this, they learn that it's okay for them to have a variety of feelings. And that even if they feel angry or jealous sometimes, this doesn't mean that they don't care about their sibling. Talking about difficult emotions or feelings also gives you the opportunity to discuss different coping strategies. So things such as breathing exercises, having a dedicated worry time or um, problem solving. And it's worth saying that the um, first webinar in this series, um, which focused on preparing children for hospital admissions, within that webinar, there's lots of helpful ideas about how to support children 
um, who worry, so strategies to manage worry. Um, so that's a helpful webinar to look at for that. Okay. So having individual time and attention. So as I said in the beginning of this webinar, it is really difficult to make time for everything and parents are often managing lots of different things at the same time. So, but trying to regular some, so sorry, trying to schedule some regular time to spend individually with a sibling could be really helpful in supporting them to feel special and important. So this could be a great opportunity to play or celebrate their strengths or achievements. We know that when busy or tired or stressed, it, it's sometimes um, easy to sometimes overlook the positive behaviour of siblings. Um, so remembering to praise their positive behaviour so they feel valued can be really helpful. So encourage their interests and goals. So as, I, as we said earlier, um, Due to the competing demands that parents often have, it's not always easy or possible um, to support the siblings' interests and goals by taking them to activities. So if you are lucky enough to have friends or families who can support you, this could be a great way of ensuring that they don't miss out on activities that you can't take them to. If you're in a position where you don't have friends or family who can help you with this, you could try explaining this to the school who might be able to offer some practical support around this. So also be mindful of caring responsibilities. So we do know, as I said earlier, that some siblings enjoy taking on some caregiving responsibilities for their siblings. However, do try not to place too much responsibility on their shoulders to ensure that they're not completing tasks that should be completed by an adult. So preparing for separations. So sometimes parents are unfortunately separated from their children as they need to care and support for another child who's in hospital. Some of these admissions happen quickly and others can be more planned. So this can understandably be a challenging time for the whole family. And siblings can sometimes describe feeling abandoned or left out. So here are some tips to support siblings to manage these separations. So first again is sharing information. So try to share age appropriate information about the procedure, explaining where you'll be um, and why you'll be separated. So always allowing time for them to ask questions. So it may be that they don't know where the hospital is or where it might look like. So it might be help helpful to share this information or um, show them photos so they know where you'll be. It might be helpful for younger children to have a countdown calendar to help prepare for to help them prepare for separations. And also it might be helpful to help prepare for them for how long that you'll be away when you'll be returning home. Although we understand that this isn't always possible and the length of time with admissions can sometimes vary. Um, so they could help you to prepare and might enjoy and help you prepare and plan for admissions um, by helping you pack, for example. So having a plan for keeping in touch can be really helpful. So where possible, try to have a plan about how and when you'll be able to keep in contact with your other children. For example, agreeing a certain time of the day um, that you'll be able to FaceTime them. So for example, agreeing to FaceTime after their breakfast and after they return from school. It's important to say that what feels right in terms of the number of time you contact your other children and the times of day that you do this will be different for every family. So just have a think about what's, what feels right for you. Um, you could explain where possible that they might be allowed to contact their sibling in hospital, um, allowed to visit their sibling in hospital. However, considering the COVID-19 pandemic, it might be helpful to explain how they won't be able to visit and explain the reasons for this. They don't feel like it's targeted towards them. They might also enjoy making a card or gift for their sibling. Again, acknowledge difficult thoughts and feelings. So acknowledge that separations and having a sibling in hospital, hospital can be difficult for lots of different reasons. So allowing them to have time to share their feelings and supporting them in to think about coping strategies, how they can access support when you're not available, when you're away. Again, accessing your wider support network. 
So as we said, siblings might need to stay with a friend or relative when you're away. So it's really helpful to enroll children in the planning of this and to share information with a support network around their routines and what they find helpful in terms of coping strategies. And this will hopefully minimise disruptions to their routine. Similarly, informing the school is likely to be really helpful to ensure that they're aware of the circumstances of the sibling. So in terms of resources, uh, there are some helpful online resources that you can access. So the British Heart Foundation has information and resources for young people about various cardiac conditions. There's also the Young Sibs website. So it's aimed towards children and young people who have a sibling who has a disability. So whilst the information therefore relates this is to disability, the website also does help have helpful resources and information for siblings in general. Um, so you might find helpful things on that website. Also, the South Wales and South West, South West and South Wales Congenital Heart Disease Network has lots of resources, including a toolkit um, called How Do I Help My Child Sibling Cope? So finally, um, we've got the um, picture here of the um, oxygen mask on the aeroplane. We'll put this here because what it does is illustrate that the safety advice is always that you put your own oxygen mask on before you're able to help others put their oxygen mask on. Um, and I think this helpfully illustrates the fact that, that you need to take care of yourself and be mindful of your own well-being um, to be able to care for other people. And that's the same for caring for siblings for siblings um, and that you need to look after yourself too and consider your own needs and what would be helpful to help you cope. Okay. So if you're looking for further support, if your child is a patient of the cardiology team at the Bristol Royal Hospital for Children or the University Hospital of Wales, so that includes the South Wales, South West, South West, South West, South Wales network, you can inquire about additional psychological support by speaking to your child's healthcare team or, can, or contacting the number on the screen. You can always also contact your cardiac clinical nurse specialist. And during admission to Bristol or Cardiff, you can also access um, hospital support services such as the play specialist team, um, chaplaincy and family support service. Um, you can also access the wellbeing toolkits developed by the psychology team. Um, which provide advice about how to manage, sorry, how, how to navigate well-being alongside a health condition. And the, there's a link at the bottom of the page here of how to access those toolkits. Um, so if following the webinar you feel you need more immediate support, there are services that provide a listening ear in times of need. So the Samaritans and Shouts and their numbers are on the screen. If you feel you benefit from accessing talking therapy or mental health support, please do contact the general practitioner. If you're in crisis or feel unable to keep yourself safe, then please do call 999 or attend A&E. There's also a number on the screen for the Bristol crisis number, um, so for the Bristol crisis team if you're based in Bristol. Um, also, we've got a list of resources here and website that, where you can access additional support um, and resources that you might find helpful to look at. So we'll keep them on the screen during the question and answer section. Great, so we'll just go on to the question and answer section now.